At long last, we're back to the 1932 airline radio. I bet you, some of you thought we'd never get around to it. The radio, of course, has been repaired and it's operational, but the cabinet needed to be done, and I sort of just left it hanging for a very long time. Not anymore. We are not going to do anything uh, except strip this cabinet, and I have another radio that requires stripping. I'll have to take this brass... Uh, dial plate out first. I left it in there so I wouldn't lose it. <laughs> I have a habit sometimes of losing small metal pieces off radios. I have to search and search and search. Not anymore. Anyway, I've already started stripping it. It's looking pretty good. Anyway, I thought, you know, I could have just stripped it and showed everybody the final result, but ah, what the heck, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and strip it piece by piece. But one thing I wanted to point out, and, uh, and that is, look what I found after I stripped the top. A cigarette burn. Is that the coolest thing? Yes, it is. Some people would say, no, that's not cool. That ruins the whole top. No, it doesn't. That is a battle scar of a bygone era. And I'll tell you what, folks, there's a story behind how that got there. Also, over here, just a light scratch. A couple of light scratches. You know, they're very light. Now, I could take some sandpaper and sand all that out. No, I'm not going to do that either. Again, these are battle scars of a bygone era. Who knows? Uh, how long ago the scratches and the cigarette burn got in there. Well, I know, and you're about to know yourself. Bonnie and Clyde were shot dead via an ambush in Louisiana in 1934. But on the way to Louisiana, they stopped off in Arkansas. I, I think they were traveling from Oklahoma to Louisiana, and they, they, they swung into Arkansas to visit a cousin of his, a long, long, long lost cousin where they could rest up, get something to eat. And he said, yeah, come on in, come on in. Well, while, while they were there for a couple of days, old Clyde put his cigarette on top of his cousin's radio and burned that hole. Well, his cousin got very, very upset about that. This was his pride and joy in his house, and old Clyde just comes along there and burns a hole in the veneer, or burns a dark spot. Well, they got into a big argument, and of course, Bonnie, she jumped in to help Clyde, and she threw something at the long-lost cousin, and it skidded, it hit the top of the radio, skidded on across, and uh, hit the wall, bounced back, and oh, it, was just, it just rolled around, did all kinds of terrible scratches here. They're not really terrible, but to the owner, they were awful. He, he said, he finally told him to get out. He didn't want him there. So they, they left, they got in their car, and they headed on to Louisiana, where, of course, they were shot dead in their car. So, that's how that happened. And I challenge anyone to prove me wrong. By the way, to uh, strip the radio, get the finish off, I'm using some of this stuff here. I get it at Lowe's. I'll tell you what, it's probably the best stuff I've used. I went over there one day to get, uh, I think it was called Clean Strip or something like that, and they didn't have any. So I had no choice but to pick up a can of this, and I'll tell you what, it's, this does a fantastic job. And I'm only doing, you know, half at a time. You don't kill yourself on this. Don't slop the stuff everywhere. Put a nice thin coat on it. Let it set for a while. Come back. Don't let it dry out. Don't let it dry out. You don't want it to dry out. It's very difficult to get off when you do that, but kind of keep it. I'm only doing about half. Now, some people, only, you know, they do it by eighths. You know, some people do it by thirds. I'm going to go down halfway, and then I'll do the other half. I'll do the legs last. The legs will be done individually. And uh, I also have some repairs to make underneath. Before I continue on, we've got some stuff that came apart here. This uh, radio it was uh, in the flood. When it got flooded, the water got up that high, and it broke the front piece off. And, it, you know, of course, after it dried out, all this glue... But that's no problem. We can fix all this. And I have the front piece. It just needs to be glued back together also. So, so that's what we're doing right now. I'll put another. I'm just brushing it on with a paintbrush, you know, where I want it. Nice and easy. I'm not going. I just don't want to slop it on. You know, this is a very, very old cabinet. I want to, you know, it survived all these years. The last thing I want to do is screw it up now. Now, once it's had time to soak, and this was soaked, though, quite a while. It all depends on how thick your wax is from years ago and how thick the varnish is and all that stuff. Take a little fiber bristle brush. You can buy these. At, I pick mine up at Walmart. Don't use metal. Don't use metal scrapers. Don't use metal bristle brushes on these old wooden cabinets. Get the plastic scrapers and just break it all up to pieces like that. It'll just scrape it right on down for you. Right to the wood without tearing the wood up, you know. It works great. And if you have to do this uh, a couple of times, 
then do it a couple of times. You do whatever you got to do. Just don't ever get in a hurry, okay? There's no rush on this stuff. Now comes the plastic scraper. I have a little gray one. They come, you know, you can get any width you want. And scrape up all that finish and wax and stripper and all that stuff. And then take it and just don't get anything on your hands. I, I be, I'll be putting on rubber gloves here pretty soon, but since I'm not touching any of this stuff, it doesn't matter right now. At least not to me. Just a gooey thing is all it is. And we'll go ahead and scrape it all up best we can. Then we'll take a rag and wipe it down. Then I'll hit it with a, a wet rag. And that'll tell us how much more we have to strip off. Well, as you can see, after the first stripping, we still have a ways to go. Everything that's white is finished and wax and whatever else was on there. We'll get the other half later. Now, in these grooves, after everything is dried out, take a, uh, uh, another fiber brush that is dry, nothing on it, and you can get down in those grooves and knock out all the loose stuff. It'll come right out for you. Okay, see how it's just disappearing right there? It's doing real good. And also up here, uh, it'll have to dry a little bit more, but normally around in here you'll find glue a lot, so be careful where the lid glues onto the top. They let a little bit squish out, I guess, at the factory, figuring, you know, who's going to look up underneath there once we put the finish on anyway, I guess. But, you know, you have to understand our ancestors also built radios on Fridays, okay? Now, this is kind of interesting. I just did the second half, and <laughs> look how much cleaner and uh, you know finish free it is from the top i did the exact same procedure the sack you know exact same amount of time and uh the top needs to be going over again amazing huh hey that happens on these big old cabinets not so much on the small anyway at least you know what i'll be doing the rest of the day i have to run to the post office real quick and mail something then i come back and then i'll just finish up the top here flip it over do the other side and then uh, i'll do the front and make a few repairs here and there. I've got to glue some stuff. I realized that right here, since the last time I worked on this cabinet, this here has, has come loose. See it? I'm gonna have to smooth some glue up in there and clamp her on down. A couple other things like that here and there, back here in particular, has really got to have some repair done. That flood really messed it up. Fortunately, it's all there, so it's just a matter of glue. So, let me head off to the post office. I'll see you when more progress has been made. Well, this has turned out to be a whole lot more work than I expected. This finish did not want to come off. Anyway, I did get the sides done. I do have the top done. And I'm now doing the front. It's still wet. I just uh, wiped it all down after the first stripping. Uh, it's taken about uh, two or three layers of that uh, stripper on there to get the... I don't know what this white crap is. It seems like it's 50 layers of wax or something. I can't figure it out might be varnish, it might be, uh, maybe, well, it wouldn't be polyurethane. They, somebody may have varnished it, or that's the way it came from the factory. I don't know. It's just old, old, old. Anyway, we have a lot of work to do. We've got, uh, we've got some uh, veneer that's peeling up. And, of course, doing the stripping is not helping it much. And a few other things. We have veneer over here that's beginning to come up a little bit. We're going to have to re-iron that back down with some glue. And... Uh, a lot of work, a lot of work. This whole mess right here, I glued on a bunch of wood uh, before I stuck it in the garage, and that's nice and solid. I'll take my motor tool and just go around there. That was on the rear. Had a lot of missing wood on the rear, and I glued some up here too. I just grind it off now. But trying to get this off here without destroying the rest of the veneer, we got a piece missing here that just came right off. I don't even know where it went, but I think I got something for that. And because uh, that there's that's not a uh, battle scar. That's uh, that's a John scar right there. <laughs> it happens, you know. So, you know, if I get on down there and things just don't look so good and it starts to fall apart, you know, I mean, we really got a problem on our hands. What we do, you know? We fix it. That's what we do. Let it fall apart. I don't care. We fix it. We always fix it. Well, it's the next day on the 29th of May, and of course, just my luck, I haven't quite got this done yet. And we are about probably to get a lot of water. 
on our property. The Arkansas River has overflowed. 23 feet, 23 feet is the uh, flood stage, and we're already above that. It's supposed to crest before the end of the week to 28 feet, just up the road from us. Uh, they're expect there's there's a creek called the Cadron Creek. A lot of people, a lot of people go fishing there. It's actually straight in that direction, over hill and down into a flat spot. That thing is supposed to overflow and flood the entire area. Now I don't know if it's going to make it here or not, but we're also expecting heavy rains. Oh, thunderstorms and rains tonight. All that water in the Arkansas River, by the way, is coming out of Oklahoma. Anyway, I've got to go out to the garage, stop what I'm doing with the radio cabinet. I've got to go out to the garage and get everything up off the floor. We're not going to go through a flood like we had a couple of years ago where everything was in there floating around. If it's, if it's going to float this time, it's going to be stuff that I don't care about. Everything is up off the floor to include my little cocoon that I always wrap our jukebox in. One of these days I'm going to have to open up the back of this jukebox, adjust those contacts and get this thing operational again. It functions fine, it just, just doesn't want to stop. Or it doesn't want to kick off and go and do the scan. It's a set of contacts down below. Anyway, she's protected from the water up to at least around my waist. Shouldn't get that high. If it gets that high, we're all lost. You know, the one good thing about getting, getting everything that can be ruined by water up off the floor, you begin to realize, you know, how much more stuff I still have to get rid of. I got rid of a lot of it this past winter, but still I've got a ton more that needs to be found a home. <laughs> Well, I ran out of stripper. Unbelievable. The old can was empty. It was about, it was only about two-thirds full anyway when I started. But I'm not going to run down to Lowe's and buy any more today, so I decided to, you know, I'll do it in the morning. And uh, as you can see, we're already playing musical clamps. So this plate, this uh, veneer on this thing is falling apart inside and out, and I've got to get it all glued. Not a problem. For those of you who followed my jukebox restoration series, you know what musical clamps are when it came to fixing that cabinet. Holy mackerel, this is peanuts compared to that. Anyway, for those uh, who would like to, this is actually a continuation of the uh, Airline 6214 radio restoration that we did, the radio and chassis restoration. Uh, for this, it was 44 videos, I believe. That was a long haul because the thing was in such mangy condition. But uh, we've got everything done except for the legs. And for those of you who want to watch the radio restoration series, I will put the link down below. And that will take you to video number one. And if you can go through that one without falling asleep, well, who knows? You might make it the rest of the way. <laughs> but we've got some stuff that's missing. See, there's a brace here that's missing. I'm going to have to have one made and glue that one in place. Uh, still a lot of mud here and there inside the cabinet. i got to get that all taken care of. I may wind up stealing a, a brace from in here temporarily and I don't know, but it's really nasty in here. Got to clean it all up, wash it all up. We'll do all that after the veneer is glued and I make it look real good because this is all going to be cleaned out, washed out and given a good sealer on the inside. That's normally what I do. I'm not going to paint it, not going to stain it. We're going to seal it. However, uh, the back of these edges now will be cleaned up and, you know, painted, looking real good. It's kind of, kind of interesting. Uh, Check out this right here. Now, why would this cabinet have a beveled off edge like that? I don't understand. This is the bottom shelf where the speaker goes. I just don't understand that at all. And up here, it's the same way up here. This has all been beveled off top and bottom on the one side. Anybody got any ideas about that? <laughs> By the way, once we get this thing totally stripped, which is going to be a while. Oops, I, I got a clamp here messed up. I better put that the right way, huh? Let me fix that. All right, that's a little better. Uh, where was I? Oh, yeah. Everything's been stripped. The rest of it's stripped down very nicely, uh, except for the parts, you know, where the veneer is lifting, front, sides, and back. And uh, when we get toward the end of this thing, when I get everything glued up the way I like it, and it could take forever, you know how I am, I like to make sure things are right before I, before I move on to the next, uh, you know, part of the series, or the next... Uh, action of the series I guess uh, I may wind up asking you guys for some inputs on how we want to stain this thing this is actually wifey's radio I want to get it done for her okay and I'm going to work on this thing and of course we'll do a, a Thunderbird video here and there but this is going to be one of my primary projects between now and the time it's finished 
So until next time, hope you enjoyed what you saw up till now. Watch the series where we did the radio. Some of that stuff's really interesting. If I remember, I can, I'm trying to think. If I remember back, we had a burned out power transformer. And we had to dig down in there and fix it and get it going again. If I'm, if I'm right, I'm not going to go back and look at it. I, I can't even remember what section it's in. So until next time, this is John.